Welcome back to our final episode of this week's Gentleman Critics. This one's going to be Best Movies of 2015. Uh, we're doing this in honor of the Oscars, and we're just basically going to go around and tell you what are, from 10 to 2, what our best movies 2015 are, and talk about them, discuss them, and why we liked them. And at the very end, we'll go around and say what our favorite or top best movie of 2015 is. And I'm going to turn this over to Jesse. Why don't you start us off? All right. I'm excited about this. This is our first list, um, something I've been wanting to do for a while because um, I'm a big list fan, <laughs> really. I just I just do that for fun just <laughs> when I have nothing to do. Um, but now I get to do it for all you fine people, so here we go. Um, uh, first up, uh, we're going to do our my honorable mentions that did not make the cut. Um, either I've watched them too soon to put them on there or they just uh, weren't weren't deserving uh first up i would have to i'm gonna give a shout out to creed um i just watched that actually today and um it's a it's a very good film um it just i hasn't had enough time to really to really sit with me so i'm i've kept it off the list um i also gonna give honorable mentions to jurassic world it was a very fun um, very fun popcorn movie this year. It just, you know, it was good. And then finally, Kingsman: The Secret Service. It was, um, it was a su- it was a pretty good movie. I I liked what they did with it. It just wasn't enough to really warrant a place on my top ten. So, um, let's get into it. My number ten is Ant Man. Mm. Um, Ant Man with Paul Rudd. This was a fun. Now this was not on the list until recently it because i had to knock off a few um but uh this was just a very uh, very fun marvel movie one of the funnest i've seen in a while that's in the mcu canon um it's a really good movie um number nine i have steve jobs um now a lot of people might not have seen this movie recently um, or at all, it was, it, I think it got a limited release, kind of, and it just, it didn't do that well at the box office for some reason, it was, it was weird, but, um, Michael Fassbender, great performance, great performances all around, um, Aaron Sorkin, what a mm-hmm. beast, yes. when it comes to the writing room, it just, he did such a good job, and he always does, it's Aaron Sorkin, he's the man, so, <laughs> um, very true. Yeah. Um, now, my number eight is something Kyle would definitely not agree with, but Alex might, and that is Furious 7. Oh, my God. Are you kidding <laughs> why, me? Why, you why put you Fast and Furious oh. The reason I put Fast and Furious 7 on my top ten list is because I don't know if I've had as much fun with the film this year by turning my brain off as I had with Furious 7. I turned my brain off. It is completely stupid. I will give you that. There, It's one of the stupidest movies I've ever seen. But it is super fun. It's just the craziest thing that they have done with any Furious movie. And I just, I wanted to put it on there because it's super fun. You know, crack open a beer, watch Furious 7, you know. I, I, don't, I, know. I don't mean to disrespect, but as a person who feels very strongly and often vocalizes my discontent with the Fast and Furious series. I have to say that I really, really disagree with that decision. And I think so that my... I think that in terms of writing, they are some of the worst movies ever. I agree. I agree. They are super throw... fun, though, and that's why I put it on there. Alex, what do you think of Fast and Furious? <laughs> to throw my opinion out there, I enjoyed the first two movies quite a bit when they first yes, came so out. Did I. When I first saw those, I enjoyed those, and I didn't watch any of them. I didn't watch Tokyo Drift or Four. I watched Five really? and Six, and I didn't like either of them. Good, because they aren't good. <laughs> so you didn't that's, see Tokyo that's Drift. My, Tokyo Drift yeah, is actually okay. It's really the only other one heard. besides One and Two you should watch. That's what I've yeah. heard, and I just I just didn't care anymore after that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's my frankly. Point, that's, yeah, frankly, I haven't seen a crazy amount of movies that have come out this year, but Furious 7, I think, warranted because I had a lot of fun at the movie theaters. And, you know, you got to do that. You know, people like their Adam Sandler movies. 
Um, I won't name names, <laughs> but <laughs> I will continue. I have not ever seen an Adam Sandler movie in theaters, I'm pretty sure. I don't uh, think well, I have. Man, I don't, don't think I've literally fun. ever seen one in theaters, so. Well, you don't need to. Let's move on. Mad Max. <laughs> uh, number seven is Mad Max Fury Road. Um, cool. This cool. this movie is action packed. We've talked about it. It won a bunch of awards at the Oscars. It's just it's a good movie, and it's gotten better every single time I've seen it. Explosions, explosions, explosions. Better than Michael Bay. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, number Calling six. Out. Number six. I this is a movie has sat with me too much but it's a movie we have talked about heavily on our podcast so far and that is spotlight mm. um now these lists are generally a mixture of of the how good we think movies are and how much fun we had with the movies and um as good as spotlight is it is lower on the list just because i've had a lot more fun with a lot of other films this year um but yeah um yeah spotlight is you know I can't really say any more about Spotlight. It's amazing. Um, always say more about Spotlight. Yeah, you can always. <laughs> uh, number five, I put Avengers Age of Ultron. I put this a little high on my list, and the reason I did that is because this, um, I, as much as I wasn't the biggest fan of the first Avengers, I have come to terms with it, and I do praise the Avengers a lot more more today than I did back in the day. Um because it was too hyped for me, but a- Avengers Age of Ultron, I was, this was one of the most hyped movies ever for me in terms of going to the theaters to see. I am such a Marvel fan now because of these Avengers movies, and Age of Ultron just did it for me. Um, it, just great, great action, just fantastic. This is the Avengers movie I was waiting for, so. Um, number four, we have The Martian. Um, this movie is a mixture of fun and just a being a great movie. Um, it just it works so it works so well. Um, Ridley Scott, great job, and you know I had a lot of I watched it like three or four times <laughs> after renting it. So and then I ended up buying it on Blu-ray because how good it is. Um, number three, we have my personal. Um, this movie I would say is the. Bob, maybe the best movie of the year, and I would say The Revenant. Um, you know, we've talked about it. Great performances. Um, Alejandro and Oritu, great job. Um, all right, my number two, um, which is the last one I'll be talking about, and I'll give it off to someone, is Star Wars The Force Awakens. This mm, almost I was, was number one. This was almost number one for me. Um, the reason I couldn't, it, I felt my number one was a little bit better than this. Um, no, maybe, yeah, but um, Star Wars The Force Awakens, how much can we talk about it? I said it, I said it you know, right after I walked out of the film. This was almost a perfect Star, modern Star Wars film. I would agree. Mm-hmm. I would agree, and, yeah. Yeah, um, now it, you know, it is. it doesn't beat out um, A New Hope and... Um, Empire Strikes Back, but I feel it does beat out Return of the Jedi for me. So it is it is my third favorite Star Wars film of all time now. So, um, all right. Um, who, who wants it? <laughs> <laughs> right, Alex, I, I am know. really curious. I don't know. Well, yeah, we okay. both are. First, I'm not going to say it, but Alex, you, you, you think you got it? I, you think you know what his number one is? Because I think we both know. I already the know one he one didn't is. say. I know what yeah. your number one is. <laughs> the viewers and don't know. We but... know. <laughs> well, they might know. Yeah, yeah. If they've been paying attention, they'll know. They'll if know. They've been paying attention, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I just want my moment to talk about it. <laughs> trust me. Okay. Trust me. You've been talking about it. <laughs> I will talk about it more. Alex, I'm gonna let I, you. I'm gonna let you uh, have this one. I, I can't wait to hear your list. I'm very. Yeah, me curious. too. I've heard Jesse yeah. in multiple drafts, so I can't wait to. I've never even heard like a draft of yours. So. Yeah. Nope. Mine's mine's changed quite a few times. There you go. All right. Starting off. Well, I guess I guess we'll do honor. honor bleh, got me all jumbling my words. <laughs> honor. Excited. Exactly. That's all it is. I'm just excited. 
First honorable mention has got to be Terminator Genesis. I'm a really big fan of the Terminator movies, and it was just fun. It was just a lot of fun to watch. As far as story goes, it was all right, but I'd recommend it. And I believe that's it as far as honorable mentions go for 15, honestly. Glad it didn't make your top 10. Move on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing shade uh, over here, Jesse. No, no offense. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I, you know, I. I not, Alex, not continue personal. with your list, please. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Number ten to start it all off is gonna be uh, James Bond Spectre mm. because Ooh, there you I'm go. just. A, I'm just a huge fan of the Bond films. I always have been, and Daniel Craig has yet to let me down. So, uh, number nine, Jesse's going to love it, Ex Machina. It's definitely oh. on the top ten from last year, without a doubt. It was just it was just awesome. It was everything about it, writing, the characters, all of it. Uh, eight, you may not agree with, but i got to go Jurassic World. I'm... Um, Pretty big fan of the Jurassic series. All three of them I love. So it just makes sense to me to have it on there. Seven is Ant-Man. Because I just think Paul Rudd was the perfect Stephen Lang. And it couldn't have been done any better than that. Oh, sorry, it was Scott. Scott, not, my bad, my misspoke. <laughs> You're good. Scott Lang, I knew that too, that's the thing. Uh, number six following that is, old, is The Age of Ultron. I think as far as like the the MCU is that that's brought it all together up until now. Yeah, I just think everybody. Yeah, I mean, it. I I definitely think uh, Avengers two. I mean, if you're gonna talk about MCU, Avengers two is huge. I mean, the the impact that that is directly going to have in Captain America's Civil War. This is going to that's going to be one of the things the government points to as a reason oh, yeah. why this whole act is going to happen. So I totally see what you're, what you're saying there with its impact on the whole Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. Age of Ultron is fantastic. Uh, number five on the list is got to be Mad Max Fury Road. Nice. Yeah, we, we've, we've talked about it before, you know, stunning and all that. Uh, the Martian comes in at number four for me. Ooh, we have I a know, similarity. I, I know, I noticed that too. Yeah. Uh, Ridley Scott is just a favorite of mine. I love it, everything about it. Uh, number three is Spotlight. Spotlight go. impressed me beyond more than I thought it was going to, and for what that's worth, I I loved it. Number two's got to be Star Wars: The Force Awakens, because, like I said, or like I mentioned in one of our earlier episodes, Star Wars holds a very special place to me, and it might be biased, but like Jesse said, it's part fun part what we thought was the best and star mm-hmm. wars definitely comes in at number two yeah totally i'm gonna save agree. my number one i'm gonna save my number one for later though kyle read us off to your list bud okay well so. i've really enjoyed your guys's list i have i have a guess as to what i think both of your top movies are uh i think you guys are going to be um interested i have a lot of things that are the same and in the same spot on my list as both I'm not you. surprised that's I what happens three to the things on my list are in the same spot as Alex's so yeah <laughs> I think I'll take 30 percent I'll take 30 percent yeah <laughs> okay I'm gonna start with my honorable mentions um I want to mention Room uh a movie yeah. that I didn't think was going to impress me that did so I'd, I'd like to, I think I need to mention that as one of the best movies of 2015, I think, for me. Uh, then I'd have to say Steve Jobs. Uh, it was, I, I enjoyed the Ashton Kutcher movie, so you can only imagine how much I enjoyed this one. Yeah. Uh, had, since this was actually a good version of a Steve Jobs movie, so. Yeah, uh, yeah I kind of enjoyed the original one, but uh, it was a okay. lot of people hated it, though. <laughs> But I watched it again, and it is kind of just Ashton Kutcher just spewing hatred. So yes. it's like, yeah. And then I'd have to say honorable mention, uh, Age of Ultron, Ooh, for sure. Now this really? this was really this was hard for me to not put this on the list. That was my ten for a while, but I was I had to I had to bump it 
I had to bump it because I'm Man, my I'm number dead. ten is Deadpool. Who? Okay. And well, I mean, well, that's no, that's 2016. That doesn't count. Oh yeah, that's right. So then you know what? <laughs> then I'm gonna actually then move up Avengers back Forgot into the we... top ten. <laughs> okay. I can't well, help but feel like Ultron us, had something to do with this. All of us. <laughs> All of us like to give an honorable mention to Deadpool. Just throw that Deadpool. out there. I just it needed we needed to talk about it one more time before it was we all had said to bring it up one more time. It's gonna be top ten of twenty sixteen, <laughs> So just wait a year and it will just be wait on a while. List. It'll come. Now this is uh this is where this is uh odd for me, the these two similarities, but um Jesse will like this, just like you did for Alex. Uh, I give nine to X Machina. Because I, again, another movie, same as Alex. I did not expect to enjoy that movie quite like I did. Uh, it was very hyped before I watched it by a certain hyped. somebody who I won't point fingers at. You're glad uh, it happened. Give, I am glad it happened. i give you a hint. It's a co-host of the show, and it's not me. <laughs> That's your hint. It also may definitely be someone's, someone's pick. We don't know, though. You know, we're just going to have to see. You know, no one knows anything right now. Stop it, guys. Going into number eight, also the same <laughs> thing as Alex, Jurassic World, because... Really? Because fucking Velociraptors, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my favorite quote so far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I love Jurassic World. I thought it was amazing, and I it wasn't really the you know, like, technically all that great, but if we're talking in terms of the best movies and you're combining fun, entertainment value, and all that, I think Jurassic World absolutely belongs on this list. Which leads me into my number seven, which is Mad Max Fury Road, which I loved. Oh, we got a similarity there. Oh, uh, yes. You both got seven on there. Yes. Yeah. And then I would put... I would put and uh, and Jesse knows that this is this is one of those things for me. I put Creed as my number six. I cool. I absolutely love the Rocky movies. I've seen every Rocky movie. Yeah. Even to- Rocky Five with Tommy Gunn. I've seen every one of them multiple times. And for me, Creed was just so great. It felt like they modernized the whole formula of Rocky and. For Sylvester Stallone to be in that movie as sort of a send-off, and it comforted me as he was transitioning into Michael B. Jordan, and just the whole movie worked. And as Jesse, you like said that. before, you know, this it feels like it's not the end of Rocky. It feels like the start of a Creed franchise. Really, I though, think. it's something else. And then I'm going to put as my fifth best movie of 2015, Ant-Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. I'm not. I am not surprised in the least that Ant Man made it up to five on your list. <laughs> Anybody who really knows me knows that I have been talking about Ant Man for like the last six, eight years. Oh At yeah. Um, oh yeah. Ant Man is one of my favorite comic book superheroes ever. He's one of the founders of the Avengers and. For me to go into that movie and the first scene is Hank Pym punching somebody in the face, you know, I just I was all I was immediately sold. You know, I love Paul Rudd as well as the comedic actor. So just this movie hit on every level for me, and it was one of the best MCU movies we've seen so far. I would so, agree. Yeah. So would it agree definitely needed to be up there. And then a fun one. Another similarity. My fourth is The Martian. Oh, uh, well, we all chose The Martian as number four. Because, you know... <laughs> That's where it stands. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it stands. I don't even know if there's anything I can really say about The Martian that, like, that I haven't Other already said. Other than go buy it. Well, it's, go buy The Martian. Go buy The Martian. On Blu-ray. Really. Someone should... If you haven't seen it, put aside some time. And see it. You know, he's a space pirate. It's great. It's great. He colonizes <laughs> Mars. I'll let you borrow it. <laughs> Just Jesse will mail us. you his copy. I will <laughs> mail you my copy. Please send it back. Please send it back. <laughs> Don't keep it you. like my grandmother. Okay. Um, my number three. Now, this was really, really tough. Okay? And I feel like... 
I, I want to stress how close number two and number three are, okay? After quite a few deliberations, and this was the last change I've made, I will put The Revenant as my number three. Ooh, really? yes. And Some similarities. <laughs> I love The Revenant, okay? This movie, when I went into it, I, I just fell in love immediately with the character and the setting. And for me, it was all worth it. Every single moment of the film was made perfect when Leonardo DiCaprio looked at me dead in my eyes at the end of that movie. So I will put The Revenant as my number three. Which leads Very me cool. into my second favorite movie this year, what I think is the second best movie in 2015, Spotlight. We can't say enough about Spotlight. Can't do it. Ugh. I even enjoy freaking uh, Stanley Tucci's portrayal of the really awkward uh, lawyer that fights, that fights Mark Ruffalo at every turn. I mean, there's just everybody did great. Ugh, so, uh, so many scenes in that movie. Uh, ugh. All and, right, time has come. That that's that, that brings us to the moment of truth. Jesse. Our number one movies of 2015. Jesse, your number one movie of 2015. What was it, bud? My number one movie of 2015, Alex and Kyle. Since you are talking no. as well. Just um, me. <laughs> okay, just Alex. Kyle, get out of here. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm... Okay, Alex and <laughs> the people listening at home. Ex Machina was my number one film of 2015. And I will elaborate thoroughly. Um, to start off with, this was kind of an indie film in a sense. Okay. It got a, it got a limited release, but then more people saw it and they put it in more theaters, and for good reason. I had to with Alex the first the first time I saw it was with Alex too. Very true. And we Very had true. to we had to drive far out of the way to go see this movie. We couldn't just go down the street to the movie theater to watch this movie. We had to go out of our way to get it, and. To start off, this movie is different than I've ever seen. I've never seen a movie like this, ever. It's enclosed. It's 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 very it's very intimate of a of a film. It only has three characters. Performances are off the charts. Oscar Isaac, um, Domino Gleason, and. Alicia Vikander as Ava. She made you feel like she was a freaking robot, and uh, it it was so it was so good. It's visually stunning. The it it makes you think above all else. Some movies you don't you want to turn your brain off, but some movies you want to think. And I I haven't I have I thought hard about this movie. Now the only you know. It's it's it, to me it's so good. It may not be the best movie of the year, but personally, it was my top ten because I've never seen a movie teach me so much by the camera angles in a film, showing you how some person moves away because something else happens, and looking and the camera centered at a certain spot. If you go back and watch the film, you can see. All of that. Also, I think it's personally responsible for me starting my big Blu-ray collection, which I might do in the future, might um, talk about all my Blu-ray collection that I have. And Ex Machina, I think, personally made me want it. It kind of set me off. And I was like, I want to become a screenwriter, director because of this film. I was like, it, it, it awakened me, I felt. So that's why... Ex Machina is my top movie of 2015. When, when Jesse, you, you talk about think, your Blu-ray collection, I would like you to please put in there my DVD of The Last Samurai by Tom Cruise and, and just, <laughs> just please talk about that a little your bit. D, your, okay, I will put that That's in the there. only DVD that I would like to be added to the Blu-ray collection. Can you is, get it on Blu-ray? 
I, I think no. we should. No, 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 never. That ruins it. Never. <laughs> All yes, right. I need I. I need you to do me a favor in your future when you become, when you when when we're all popular with this and we got our people come to us to watch movies to critique. I want I want you to be the person we put in quotes on the back of the of the DVD box, and it just says this movie awakened me. <laughs> yes, I have I have never heard somebody use that expression to talk about a movie, and I love it. That yeah, really though, that's a very intense. <laughs> Like, you would hear somebody say that, and you would be like, wow, like, this movie clearly meant a lot to that person. People out there just know that I am opinionated, and I am passionate. And he is awakened. I am awakened, not by The Force Awakens, but by Ex Machina. That's my number one. (laughs) Very nice. Very good list, Jesse. I like that a lot. I loved Ex Machina. That's awesome. It's a very good movie. Alex? All right. Alex. My, num- my number one, 2015, has got to be The Revenant. Without a doubt, I just... So many movies this year, and I like, the more and more we talk about it, the more and more prevalent it is that these movies... This, this past year was a phenomenal year yeah. for the film industry in Hollywood. So good. But The Revenant, I feel like, as far as creativity goes, as far as how much work was put into it, I, I feel like that's deserving of a number one spot in my book. It's and, a testament to modern cinematography. It really is. Yeah. Really. It does, it's just such an amazing job. I mean, so my you number don't just one win best director. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the, yeah, my number one's definitely The Revenant. Thank you, Leo, for everything you did. In that movie. Yeah. Can we can we actually, in honor of that, and in honor of the week and our first true filming of Gentlemen Critics, can we have a moment of silence for Leonardo DiCaprio and everything that he's accomplished in his career and the fact that in 2015 it all came together and Leonardo DiCaprio is now an Oscar winner? (sighs) Congratulations, Leo. Congratulations, Leo. That was nice. I hold up a non-existent wine glass to you. It is not in my hand right now. I just now. Gatsby held up to him, you know, just, just toast. <laughs> there you go, All Leo. Right. Yeah. Kyle, round, end it for the night with us. What, what was your top movie of 2015? I'm going to choose to let music speak what words cannot in this moment. <laughs> Okay, if, if I were to say, you know, there's, there's, there's a few things out there that really, really stuck with me, and it was Star Wars. Nice. The Force Awakens, okay? Dun, I mean, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> music yes, that's so- speaks first, and that is what is so impressive about this movie for me, is that, you know, it spoke first. You know, was the soundtrack. I felt the moment, the moment that it started, I felt comforted. I felt, I felt at home and at peace. I felt like this was something I have been looking for. I mean, it was better than Revenge of the Sith. It was, it was so better. good. It was, it was. That would mean that this is the best Star Wars movie we've gotten since Return of the Jedi, I I love Star Wars. And if I'm going to say the best movie of 2015, I don't think that it can, it can go without putting Star Wars as the number one. I think that this movie, it broke the internet. I mean, it did break really the did. internet. Ugh. Just about, about as bad as uh, Kim Kardashian did a little while back. <laughs> that definitely was a thing. I yeah. was very skeptical. Um, going into this movie, I had only seen Oscar Isaac in very few things. Jesse had talked uh, very highly about him, and he showed me Ex Machina, and that was really the only performance by Oscar Isaac that I had ever really seen that I truly thought he did a phenomenal job. And then to go see him be Poe Dameron, the best pilot in the galaxy, I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I am immediate, I'm sold on Oscar Isaac moving forward in the future, you know, and, and, 
every time I saw this movie, the characters grew on me more and more, and they became so great. Uh, I don't en- enough can't be said about Rey and how how much I look forward to seeing her development as a Jedi moving forward. Uh, John Boyega got funnier and funnier every time I saw the movie, uh, and it's the very end. I got to see Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, something I never thought I was ever going to get to see again. So I will say that the best movie of 2015 was Star Wars The Force Awakens. Boom. Very good list. Yeah. Well, guys, I think we did a great I think we did a great job. I think this has been awesome. I hope everybody who's listened has enjoyed. I know we enjoyed making it. <laughs>